We'll now consider the uh, representation of an inductor in the Laplace domain. What we're going to find is that, and as we've talked about from the very beginning, the Laplace domain allows us to account for initial conditions or account for energy that is associated with the current flowing through an inductor at t equals zero. So as we know, the voltage across the capacitor V of t is equal to L times the derivative of the current, which is a function of time, with respect to time. If we take the Laplace transform of both sides, we get the Laplace transform of V of t on the left side is equal to the Laplace transform of L di dt, dropping the, well, I guess we can put it in there, of t. We bring the L out the value of the inductor L outside the Laplace transform. On the right hand side we have then L times the Laplace transform of the derivative. And of course on the right hand side we have the Laplace transform of V of T is just V of S. Now you'll recall from our operational transformations back uh, in previous videos that the Laplace transform of a derivative is equal to, now we still have the inductor value out here in front, but the Laplace transform of the derivative is equal to S times I of S minus I of zero minus. So in the Laplace domain, the inductor is replaced with, or the relationship between the voltage and current in the Laplace domain is V of S is equal to L times this difference of S I of S minus the initial condition. Distributing L through to both terms and realizing or calling then this I of zero minus, we're going to call it I naught, I at zero minus, replace it with just a different variable name, I naught. We have then this is equal to L S I of S. Let's drop the S dependency here. It's, it's still there, but we're just not going to be uh, explicit with it. Minus L I naught. So in representing the inductor in the, in the Laplace domain, we end up with two terms. The voltage across the inductor, shown here, plus to minus V of S, is equal to Ls times the current flowing through it minus Li naught. If you stop and think about it, we can write a KVL around this loop right here, starting with V of S. It would be negative V of S coming up and then going down here. The current is I of S. We're going in the direction of current flow, so it would be plus S L I of S and then we have the minus to plus so that would be a minus L I naught equals zero or bring V sub S to the other side we have exactly what we've got here V of S is equal to L S times I of S minus L I naught thus this entire combination or this uh, series combination of S times L, an inductor with a quantity of S times L, in series with this voltage source of quantity L I naught, represents both the inductor and the initial conditions or the initial current associated with the inductor. You'll notice that the voltage source is referenced in the direction to keep the current going in the direction that I sub S was referenced. So this is a series representation for the inductor. There will be times when it will be more convenient to represent that inductor in the Laplace domain in a parallel combination. So if we go through a source transformation, replacing this voltage source with K naught or with um, L I naught divided by L S, just um, you know, current is equal to voltage divided by impedance. The current value here then would be the voltage which was L I naught 
divided by S times L, the L's cancel, and we end up with a current source equal to I naught divided by S in parallel with this same impedance SL. And once again, you'll notice that the reference direction for the current source is pointing in the direction of the initial current. And once again, this entire this entire structure then replaces the time domain inductor, a value L with an initial current I naught flowing in it, is replaced with this in the parallel in parallel form.